Hey everyone, welcome to my Brain Talk Tuesday. This is Danielle. Daniel here with you from San Diego, California. I am a LCSW, which means a licensed clinical social worker and doctor of clinical psychology student. And every Tuesday I do these Brain Talks. And this Tuesday I'm gonna veer just a little bit in talking about mental health issues. We're gonna talk about um, after cancer care. And the reason why I chose that topic is because I just had a recent discovery of cancer in my body as well as a tumor. So I'm going to share a little bit about my journey and some tips that I have researched heavily now. And I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, what is it you're doing? Share, share you know, what you've learned because, you know, it's, it's a lot, a lot of stuff to dive into when you're looking at like after cancer care, for example, or when you're looking at autism. And so when it's nice when someone that you know or someone you can connect with um, dives into that information and can share it with you. So that's what we're going to do today. And what I recommend, you know, we all have this, it's like a light inside of us, right? This energy inside of us that moves throughout and it inspires you to do what you need to do. So what the things that stick out to you I would write those down because I may talk about things that you're like, eh, whatever, you know, but, or you might find things that really apply to you and it feels like this like kind of enlightenment. That is what's telling you this is something you want to do. So with that, you know, I'd like someone to be a commenter. If someone could comment some of the tips, cause I'm going to give you lots of different little, um, food, you know, cause the gut, right? Gut brain connection, the gut immune system connection is everything. So if someone could be my commenter, um, which is really, you know, scribe <laughs> what I'm, you know, some of the key points that I'm saying, it helps us visually to see that. And thank you so much. And I go back for the next, you know, 24 hours and watch these and answer questions. But while I'm on, I try to stay, you know, to the point so these can be quick and precise and you can get the most out of your Brain Talk Tuesdays with me. So let me tell you a little bit about my story. So I have been, my whole life, I struggled with um, female organ issues, um, cysts, um, you know, ovarian cysts. I had one I had ovary I had to remove a while ago. And uh, so I had one surgery previous, which was laparoscopic. And then in about August, so that was August of this year, or sorry, 2017, I, yeah, hi Linda, hi everybody, good to say hi when you jump on, love to say that, love to see, have you say hi, and also you can share this, um, it'll be great information for other people. So, um, as, okay, so August came around, I started getting a really deep pain in my right ovary, and I didn't know what it was, but I figured it was going to be like, well, at the beginning I thought, okay, maybe I'm going to start my period and my ovary just hurts. And you know, that happened. And then a couple weeks after that, I was still having the pain. So I thought maybe I was ovulating. And about the third week, I realized that that ovarian pain, because it was getting more intense, was not my period, not ovulation. It was something was wrong. And I thought I probably had another cyst growing on it. And so I went and just like, all right, well just, you know, hopefully not. But I went into my doctor, I got an ultrasound and they saw a large mass and that's all they could say in the ultrasound. So they sent me to the MRI. So, I mean, many of you have probably gone through this. It's kind of scary. And, you know, I went to the MRI, I went, just went by myself. I'm like, okay, I go to the MRI, you just kind of do things. And while I was there, it was a little emotional and I wish I had brought someone with me. So I would say if you can bring people with you, it's nice to have support when you're going through some scary medical stuff. So in the MRI, by the time I had the MRI, this was mid-September now. So I had started having a little bit of pain in the beginning of August, mid-September. I couldn't lie on my back anymore. The pain was so intense that it was, it was must have been pinching a nerve. I couldn't sleep on my back. I had to only sleep on my sides. So laying in the MRI is all on your back and it lasted about 20 minutes and I didn't I didn't know how long it was going to last but by the last little round of the machine you know doing its little magnet thing I was in so much pain I started crying but I was holding still because I don't want them to start over and do it again so I was just like holding still and started crying because I hurt so bad and I had been you know um Gosh, what's the word in English? I thought of it in Spanish all of a sudden. Um, I had been dealing with and just, you know, having this pain and being like, okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. And then all of a sudden I just, I lost it. So as um, soon as the round of magnets was done, I pushed the button. I'm like, let me out of here. And they came and I said, I'm sorry, I'm in so much pain. They're like, well, you're done. I'm like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> so I didn't realize that was the last round of, you know, loud magnet stuff. 
But if you ever have an MRI, ask them for headphones. That was awesome. I had some 80s channel and it was nice. That kind of helped with the pain. <laughs> it was like some 80s soft music. It was great. So, so the MRI happened. This is now mid-September. I got the MRI. By the time I got in with a specialist, we're looking at the third week of September. And it was a, a gynecologist and she said, you know, this is a large mass, but it seems like it's growing in size from what you're reporting and from the ultrasound from two weeks later, she said, I think you need to go see a specialist. Um, so I went and saw a, uh, what do you call it, oncologist, gynecologist, um, surgeon, and she saw me, saw the results, and she said, you need to get in surgery on Monday. So this was the end of September, and I was in surgery five days later. So it was all pretty quick and pretty emotional. I didn't know still from what they said in the MRI, it was a benign or dermoid, which means just a large mass. They didn't see any active cancer in the MRI. However, when I was in um, surgery, um, they did, she, they pulled out the tumor. They had to open me up from, you know, the lower abdomen all the way up straight. So not a bikini line cut, but up my abdomen through my middle of my abs to get the tumor out whole so that if there was cancer because it was fast growing and tumors without cancer don't, aren't fast growing. And this was just booming, which is a sign of um, cancer. So they took it out whole, which helped it not spread, which was such a blessing. And when they did that, um, they tested it and it did have a sarcoma cancer, which is a very rare cancer and it grew, it grew in my right ovary. And uh, with that, they ended up having to remove my right ovary. So, um, and my, uh, you know, a lot of my female organs there. So it was kind of an emotional, let alone cancer, all this kind of stuff going on. The good news, is that they they did a biopsy of my abdomen, lymph nodes, and you know the wash that they did. Everything came back negative. I didn't have any active cancer cells in my abdomen at the time. And then I've had a scan, a thermography scan, on my entire um, abdomen and chest, and show there's no cancer formation. So, yes, this is such good news. Thanks for all the hearts. I'm so grateful because it, it's been, it was a little bit you know, traumatic. Um, but I will tell you, I've learned a lot because just because that came back negative, it doesn't mean that I don't have, or actually all of us I've learned, everybody has cancer cells free floating that are hard, you can't detect um, all over in your body. Hey, hey sorry, I don't, oh well, I guess you can grab that. Cats are wild and active now. <laughs> so. Um, so everybody has cancerous cells. So let me tell you the key tips with after cancer care, okay? And just, you know, overall healthy tips. First of all, everybody has cancerous cells in their body. It's a matter of um, some, some things not working right in the body. They start to form and develop into a tumor, which then either causes pain like I had, or it's detected by your, you know, different tests that you can do, thermography grams, um, or thermo thermogram, thermogram, <laughs> thermography test, things like that, PET scans, and they can see a formation at a certain size. They can't see it at an early stage. Or there's some blood tests, there's other stuff you can do. So with that, once you see that, that's where it's at a more dangerous spot. So the key with cancerous cells or after cancer care is going to be induced apoptosis. So apoptosis is the natural cellular process, right? You've got your healthy cell, it becomes active and alive, and then something happens where it's just mutating and not healthy. Normally, a cell would induce apoptosis, okay? Meaning, thank you, Mary, for commenting. I appreciate that. Meaning that your cell goes, hey, this is not healthy. We need to get rid of this cell and flush it out of the body. So they call apoptosis, it induces apoptosis, and blah, it goes from the body, okay? So that's really your key, and the key to help your body do that so that it can induce apoptosis is the immune system, okay? So this is a key, and then your diet, there are certain things you can add in your diet that do help induce apoptosis. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, so let me look at my notes so I don't skip around too much. So one thing I want to tell you is there's not one diet that fits everyone and to be open-minded. I have found, especially through this process, there's a lot of people who are very dogmatic about you know their diet and just like everybody should be eating this way. This is how it was in the Garden of Eden. And you know, my first thing is 
okay, the Garden of Eden, their bodies couldn't die. They weren't mortal. So their bodies weren't really, you know, how ours are today. So that's one thing. But the other thing is you need to pay attention and be open-minded to what you may need for your health at that time. Maybe there's a time where you ha you, your body needs to go vegetarian. It cannot process and handle any meat. Or maybe there's a time where you have to eat you know, all raw. Or maybe there's a time where you need to have so, like a, more meat. You just need to pay attention to what your body does need. So I'm going to give you Danielle's diet. I don't follow somebody else's. And what I recommend is that you, as you listen to, to me, or as you listen to the truth about cancer, if you're real serious about after cancer care or just um, prevention and just being healthy, I highly recommend to um, go on the Truth About Cancer website. They have a um, series that you can purchase. I don't know how much it is, but it's well worth the cost. I have listened to these talks over and over again. And what I want you to notice is what sticks out to you. You have a light within you that guides you and what your body needs. And so when you, these things stick out to you, then you write them down. And that's what I did. I have a little notebook when I would listen to them and, and little things that just went clicked for me. I went, yeah, that's what I'm so supposed to do because it became very overwhelming to just get out of the hospital and go, oh my gosh, I've got to change my whole diet. So start with one thing at a time, like I've talked about on the New Year's um, resolution call. One thing at a time and just change that for that week or maybe it takes you a month to accustom to that because stress and mindset are as much if not more so actually mindset is more so the key to you know after cancer care than just diet is so mindset is huge yes Kathy exactly baby steps is important because when I got out and I was like oh and I had ice cream I remember I had it was organic but I had ice cream in my freezer and I was like oh I gotta get rid of it I can't eat it and then one day I remember I came home and I was just tired and feel good and I wanted some ice cream and I thought you know what I'm okay I'm going to eat it so and now I haven't bought it again because I really am sticking strict to my diet my Danielle diet <laughs> but I'm just letting you know um, the stress is worse so don't eat something guiltily if you're gonna eat it own it and love it and love yourself for it okay so that's my mindset piece that is our brain talk right Okay, so I think, you know, and this is whether this applies to you or not, and you're like, I don't want to have cancer, no cancer in my family, I'm good. It's better to work preventatively than chasing down something that's um, going on wrong in your body. So this, there's some really good tips here. Um, the truth about cancer, there's a lot of tips. I wrote them down. One that really stuck out to me, because there's all sorts of different diets, but one that stuck out to me was just an 80% plant-based diet. That should be, you know, for, for me, that was key, doing 80% plant-based. I'm going to show you a couple books that might be helpful for some of you. Body Ecology, this has a certain type of diet and um, things that's cooked food, but it's also some raw food. It's a lot of alkaline food. Um, quinoa um, is the only grain they, um, they rec recommend in here. I think quinoa is the only one, maybe buckwheat as well. So they do recommend some grains. So that's body ecology, and most of it is got a lot of stuff with fermented foods, kefir and things like that. Another one that they talk about for you know aftercare cancer is keto diet. So this is another good one. Just like I said, pay attention to what speaks to you. There's not one diet that fits all, really. There's not. It's not a hat. <laughs> so it really needs to be uh, what's good for you. Um, keto diet is heavily more um, meats and um, no grains so I, I like I like keto I follow like I said I follow Danielle diet <laughs> I follow my own stuff this is the body ecology cooking cookbook so lots of great stuff in here I I like to get a variety of things and another key that stuck out to me on the truth about cancer series was talking about variety and I did not have variety before I healthily but I same thing all the time I just didn't like to think about it so what I do now is when I like when I do salads and stuff, I get stuff that I know I would never put in. Like I don't love celery, but now I'll just put celery on it. I'm like, I'll eat it. I know it's good for me. So it's good to have the variety. Okay, so here is some of your list of some ingredients that you want to look for for after cancer care. First of all, I'm going to talk about is okay, the immune system, right? Immune system is key for your body to induce apoptosis and so you don't get sick, right? Um, so boosting the immune system, um, you want to avoid sugars. 
sugar depletes the immune system, especially cane sugar. So every single, one thing you could do easily today is just start looking at your ingredients when you go shopping. If you have stuff in your house, like I said, don't stress. Unless you feel like you're not, it's not stressful for you, then yes, yeah, throw stuff out. But go to the store and just look at all the ingredients. Your tomato soups have sugar. I haven't, I haven't found a tomato soup now that I can buy. Um, lots of things have sugar and canola oil. You avoid sugar and corn. But here's why. Sugar has um, a high, obviously, high glycemic index. And cancer cells have sugar receptor sites. So that's why when you go for like a PET scan, CAT scan, right, they make you drink a radioactive glucose glucose which is sugar so that if there's cancer the sh the radio the active glucose is going to connect to that cancerous formation and light up like crazy on the screen so avoid cane sugar now i one thing i have found is dark chocolate i love and 85% is probably what you want to look for and the other thing i can give you is ingredient wise just look for simple ingredients you don't need like all these things, you don't know what they are. Now I found one dark chocolate that's this one, Nibble, 85%. And the reason I bring this up is because, okay, so if you look at the ingredients, where'd my ingredients go? Ingredients, organic cocoa beans, and then it has, that's, that's the only ingredient besides this one, it says organic cane sugar. And at first that concerned me, but if you look at the sugars, it says less than one gram of sugar. So. So again, they're not putting too much and it's 85% dark, so it weighs it out. But that's the only one I've ever found that there's some others that don't have sugar, but they have other ingredients like soy and the stuff that I don't want in my body. So nibble is a good or, um, organic 85% though. You want to make sure it's 85% if you're going to do chocolate. Okay, the other thing, um, let's see, sugar. So I talked about glycemic index. So there are foods that you might think might be healthy but have a high glycemic index. So when you have a high glycemic index, what does it do? It converts into sugar. So if you're really, you know, doing a strict after cancer care or preventative, you want to do um, low glycemic index, but you want to get rid of high glycemic index foods, and that's your white foods. That's going to be your white potatoes, unfortunately, because I love those, but white potatoes, white grains, like rice and things like that, um, white breads. So it, I avoid all gluten. Gluten has a high glycemic index. So like we talked about in the New Year's resolution, if your goal is to get rid of gluten, do one thing at a time. Maybe start with your tortillas and you can get siete tortillas. So that's S-I-E-T-E, -E, siete. They have, oh, I brought the tortilla chips over here. They have tortilla chips, so that's siete. They're grain free. They're made from cassava root, which has a low glycemic index and it's a root vegetable and the ingredients are really good and this is a great way to ha replace your tortilla chips with so you get rid of corn as well as flour tortillas or corn tortillas so just little things like that that you can do um, I eliminate most grains now because of that glycemic index the other thing is fermented foods and probiotic foods so fermented foods are probiotic and that's sauerkraut and I would never touch sauerkraut before <laughs> and now I'm like I don't care I actually like it I tried kimchi is also another fermented food. I tried that the other day. I do not like that, <laughs> but I make myself, you know, eat it to finish up the bottle I, I bought because I know it's healthy and I know a lot of people love kimchi more than they love sauerkraut. So fermented foods are also kefir. So I do a goat kefir and fermented foods can be coconut kefir. Oh, <laughs> I've got a cap playing with me in the back. <laughs> you doing <laughs> I was like what's hitting me it kind of scared me I forgot they were right there um, okay so let's see uh, most of the diets they say low to no grain and then low to no beans so just looking at what you can replace and like I said I do 80% plant-based no soy no corn no canola oil read your ingredients so you're getting rid of these things now like I told you, I just want to remind you, Jen says, yum, kimchi. Yeah, everybody loves it. I, ugh, I don't like it, but I'm eating it. <laughs> I like the sauerkraut better. So um, what I want to remind you, I'm going to give you lots of tips. Just write down what really kind of resonates with you because doing everything at once is not is ridiculous. It's stressful. So just take what you can and just know that everybody's going to have something different that is they need right now in their diet. It's not all one diet fits all right now. 
Okay, so the only sweetener that I've read from the cancer books and all that stuff is, that's okay, that doesn't have a glycemic index is stevia. Okay, so stevia, stevia. And I add that to my teas. Um, whatever I need a little sweetener in, I'll add the stevia too. Another food you want to focus on are sprouted foods. So sprouted foods are sprouts. Um, I brought this over here. I found this um, sprouted granola bars. So when you sprout or ferment things, it changes their properties, which is, you know, to a healthier state. So um, let's see, this had ingredients. Where are they? Organic sprouted raw oat groats, organic um, sprouted raw sunflower seeds, organic, okay, or, everything's organic, okay? Sprouted raw buckwheat, sprouted raw pumpkin seeds, so sprouted millet. This is, um, this is something I have found that um, is okay for my diet. So when you have stuff that's sprouted, it doesn't um, affect the body so much. Um, another thing, was I going to say fermented, no sprouts, oh, miso soup, I didn't bring it because it's in the fridge, miso soup is a really good fermented food, um, and I really recommend South River miso, it's been, um, it's all organic, it's been aged properly, doesn't have anything that would be toxic in it here, there's the kitty cat, he's cleaning himself, <laughs> so you can watch him, <laughs> a lot more fun. Um, okay, so that's some of the kind of recommended ideas. So I'm just going to kind of recap this part and then I'm going to go on to a, you know, typical diet and some other foods. So no sugars, you want fermented foods, you want probiotic foods, you want foods that have a low glycemic index, um, you want low to no grains because of the glycemic index, um, low to no beans. And I know someone, uh, and I, I actually have, n I do not know the answer. I'll look it up. It might be because they have a high glycemic index. It might be because, um, I don't know why. And I love beans, but no, all my cancer books that I, you know, these, I've got the body ecology one and the keto one and none of them have beans in them. And I don't know why. So I will, I'll, we'll have to just look it up together. Um, soy corn, you want to avoid for sure. Um, stevia is okay, and then at least 85% dark chocolate, and then sprouted foods. So those are kind of like your idea, and I'll give you some actual, oh, if someone said beans are high in carbs, which would probably mean that has a high glycemic index. So, and then the last thing is um, to, re to review is 80% plant-based. So this is what I have found with studying everything, and I've taken everything in to do it, Danielle diet. <laughs> So let's see, I recommend some foods I recommend. Um, I do, um, so juices, I, I order Project Juice because I know for me, I'm not sitting here juicing all my own stuff. If I'm not gonna do it, I might as well get it somewhere. So if you can juice your own stuff, that's great. Maybe I'll hire you to juice for me. But I do Project Juice and I get juices delivered um, every week. So they deliver it to my door on Mondays and I get six fresh juices. I love it. And then what else did I have in here? Okay, so let's talk about meat and dairy real quick. So some people have like, you shouldn't eat any of those. I know, so like I said, don't be dogmatic about it. It's not one size fit all with diet. And also, you never know. So when, when I listened to the truth about cancer, some doctors were saying everything should be, you know, plant, 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 raw, all this stuff. And then others were saying, actually, no, there are, um, what is it, in casein, there's a piece in casein that's been studied that helps with inducing apoptosis. And so... You want to just pay attention to what you need and, and have your own diet, right? So my at my diet this time is 80% plant-based and I do dairy and I do only raw. So I do raw, organic, no, horm no hormones, non-GMO, no antibiotics. And I make sure like everything was either pasture raised, not fed corn. And so I do like raw cheddar, I'll do Parmesan. Those are kind of the two and I'll do goats. Um, I like goat's milk the best. And then the other thing with meats, uh, make sure again, organic, pasture raised, not fed corn, not topped off with corn. So I get it from a local farm called Dale Farms and I get um, lamb and chicken and stuff like that. So I'll um, uh, make sure it gets non-hormones, non-GMO, not fed, you know, anything like that. It's, a, it's a, an actual family farm. So anyway, that's what you want to look for in your eggs, things like that. So I do those, but those again are um, more in my 20% rather than my 80%. So anyway, I hope this has helped. I'm going to give you my typical day of a diet. 
Um, I'm not very, you know, adventurous with cooking. I don't love it. So I kind of stick to something and I do it over and over. Um, but my breakfast, I'll tell you my typical diet. My breakfast, usually I'll do like a handful of raw nuts and I'll vary those up. Sometimes pumpkin seeds, sometimes walnuts, sometimes pecans, um, cashews, but all of them are raw. So I'm not getting roasted and cooked with salt and all that stuff. So raw nuts, I'll do a scoop of sauerkraut in the morning. I I like I actually like it. Um, I don't love it. I don't want to eat a whole bowl, but one scoop of it's fine. And then I'll do a mug of miso soup because it's a little cool right now. Uh, I can't say cold because I live in San Diego, but it's cool. And so the mug of miso soup, I just warm it up and it's really good. And then for lunch, so it's just so easy. I think it's easy to eat this way. Um, I don't miss toast and all that kind of stuff. So for lunch, I'll do a probiotic and immune um, boosting shake. It's by Body Ecology. That's this. You can go on their website. I don't know. I think it's Body Ecology. You just Google that. And they have probiotic um, shakes and stuff like that. So I, I do that with a scoop of um, raw almond butter or raw walnut butter. I mix up my nut butters. So again, just having a variety is really important in your diet, which I did not do before. I was like, I bought the same thing. I'd go to the, I don't like to do this. So I'd go to the grocery store and I'd be like, okay, I know exactly where I need to go. Just grabbing the same stuff I always grab. And now I'm, I'm doing more variety, which is fun. I kind of like it. The walnut butter is really good, by the way. Cashew butter, so good, creamy good. Okay, so I'll do, for lunch, I'll do a shake and then I'll do a green juice, you know, a little shortly after. And sometimes I'll do like a little quinoa vegetable, like kind of like a stir fry, but it's just quinoa and vegetables um, with amino, uh, Bragg's amino acids on that or something like that for lunch instead of a shake. Okay, then for dinner, I'll either do um, a fresh salad with, I like sunflower seeds on it with Parmesan cheese on my fresh salad and any vegetables and kale, all sorts of butter leaf lettuce I can do. Or I'll do, if, um, if I'm really hungry, I'll do a cauliflower pizza, which I love. So you go to caulifloverfoods.com. They have excellent cauliflower plant. The plant-based one is the one I get, and it's just cauliflower. So then, then my diet, I'm eating a cauliflower pizza crust, right? And then I'm putting just a little bit of tomato um, stuff on it. And then I put my vegetables on it. Sometimes I'll do little turkey bratwurst that I get from that farm place. And it's excellent. So like, uh, it's just an easy way and it takes me 10, 15 minutes to cook it, which I like. Or I'll do like some tacos with some ground, uh, either turkey or uh, lamb or chicken. And I'll put some cumin in there and then do the siete um, tortillas, which are non-grain tortillas. And I'll put some vegetables, like some lettuce and cilantro and stuff on top of that. And that'll be my dinner. Now I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Anybody else getting hungry? So that's um, the diet piece. That's kind of a typical. So like I said, uh, it's avoiding sugars, increasing fermented foods, increasing probiotics. I take a probiotic as well, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, and I do low glycemic foods. So uh, Michelle said zucchini lasagna. Oh, I love zucchini lasagna or zucchini alfredo. If I go out to eat, I go to Peace Pies, which is all raw food, and it's just wonderful. So, and then, um, what else did I say? 80% plant-based sprouted food. So those, that's kind of what you want to look for. Like I said, just choose one thing to start with and implement it in your diet. It's super easy. You see the cat tail over there? <laughs> He's so funny. He's just sitting there. i got to show you guys his face. He looks like Chesh Cheshire Cat right now. Hi. That's Lincoln. <laughs> they love to tuck their hands under. He's a, he's a sweetie. He's, he's my little snuggle bug. He comes in. Um, sorry, I'm veering for a second before I go into my last piece. He comes in the bed. He likes, he likes his, um, caveman or his man cave time, you know, and, um, he comes into the covers and so I'll put my leg up like a tent and he'll go in there. He just sits and purrs. He lays on my leg and purrs. And sometimes he's purring so much, like yesterday, that he drools <laughs> and he gets my old leg. But that's gross. <laughs> but anyway, he's, a, he's sweet. He loves to snuggle. Okay. Um, okay, a couple foods I'm going to show you. And then I'm going to go into essential oils and supplements that can support um, a healthy body system. So these crackers, they're paleo. So like I said, I don't follow paleo, I don't follow exactly keto, I don't follow, but I follow, follow Danielle. <laughs> follow what your body needs. But this is great. They are gluten-free, they're seed crackers. 
So um, ingredients, organic sesame seeds, organic almond flour, organic sunflower seed flour, chia seeds, flax, you know, so good stuff. A couple other things to help you. I showed you that. Organic veggie wraps. So instead of doing, it's just easy because I know I love sandwiches. So what I'll do is organic veggie wraps and I'll put what I would normally put in a sandwich. I just put in here, roll it up. And these are good, like very, very good. Um, they're very hearty too. So they're, they're very filling. Um, let's see their ingredients. Where is it? Z uh, organic zucchini, organic apple, organic flaxseed, organic coconut, organic turmeric, you know, and I'm not gonna read all of them, but that's your first few ingredients are those. Or there's also coconut wraps. So just you can do your sandwiches, but in these types of things. So really easy to find stuff to replace. Okay, so let me just end here with a couple of things. I know this is a little longer because I've given a lot of detail, but your essential oils and supplements that can support your healthy body um, in recovery is going to be, first of all, the Lifelong Vitality Pack. So this is my favorite supplements. Now you've got an Xe Omega, which is your omegas plus nine different essential oils that support the body to respond healthily, meaning helping the body induce apoptosis when needed. So this is really good. It supports the immune system. And then you've got your vitamins A through Z, right? Is there a whole food base? And then you've got this one. I love the Alpha CRS. Now this is awesome stuff. Let me tell you what's in there. Boswellia, um, which is um, from frankincense, which also encourages healthy response to cellular health. Scutellaria root, milk thistle, green tea leaf, pomegranate, pineapple, turmeric, grapeseed, pine bark, um, I don't know, CoQ10, quercetin, ginkgo, there's lots in here. So I highly recommend being on these daily. And I'm just going to kind of tell you my little story. So in December, I ran out about mid month and I hadn't realized that I didn't have another supply because I, I hadn't, I didn't put it on my monthly order, which not, not doing that again. So now it's back on my monthly order. So I uh, ran out and I was like, oh, it'll be fine. It's, I've got so many other supplements I was taking and you know, from recovering from surgery, I was taking extra vitamin C, I was taking all this stuff. I was like, I'm sure I'll be fine. Within two weeks, I noticed I was having major like, joint in hand. it's like I felt like my whole body was becoming more inflamed and achy I'd wake up in the morning I could I, I have to get my cats their food ready and I could barely hold the spoon my hand hurt so bad so anyway it was crazy so then I got back on them and now I'm doing much better like 80% better now from what I was and I just started them last week again so I highly recommend because I've never noticed a difference before with vitamins until I tried this lifelong vitality pack so that's a good one um, another is probiotics, so PB Assist is one that I use the most, but it's important to mix up your probiotics, I think, as well, so I'll get some from my organic food market, but this is kind of my staple probiotic, and it's, um, you know, probiotics got all your uh, strains in it. And then lastly, for supplements, is DDR Prime. And this is a capsule which is broken down into nanoparticles so that it can absorb better in your cells. And DDR Prime is excellent for supporting a healthy response. Oh, I got hiccups to um, and unhappy cells, okay, we're gonna say. So they have done studies with this on cancer and have had amazing results. So I highly recommend, I just do it for maintenance. And it's frankincense, orange, lemongrass, thyme, summer savory, clove, and nioli. Amazing oils for your cellular health. It all comes down to your cells, right? Your immune cells, your body cells, and immune system in, um, in your cells are the most important. And this, this is going to be helpful for that. And then lastly, just a couple of oils that I used consistently after my surgery is frankincense. And I put it under my tongue, I rubbed it on my um, abdomen, on my belly where they had to open me up. And Copaiba, same thing, under my tongue and I rubbed it on my abdomen. Immortel is a blend for skin. So I put that on my belly, but it's also, it's kind of my emergency. Because what's in Immortel? It's a blend that's got frankincense, helichrysum, lavender, rose, like all these major helpful oils for 
cellular health and the body. So I put that on quite frequently. Sometimes I'll do it under arms so it gets into that area to cleanse the lymph nodes. And let's see, On Guard Plus for the immune system. I'll do like a 10 day regimen once a month of On Guard Plus where I just take it twice a day. If I'm feeling something like my body's feeling a little weaker, I'll do it maybe three times or four times a day, but generally two times a day. And then last but not least, Zendocrine, the liver. The liver needs flushing. If you want your immune system to be healthy, you cannot avoid the liver. So Zendocrine is a great, it's a, it's a capsule, it's a, uh, a detox that you can do with essential oils and herbs that help detox the liver, help the liver flush out things that are, you know, bogging down the immune system. So I know I've given, I've given a lot of things. I would love to hear what um, tips were helpful for you, what stuck out to you, if you can type those in now. And just like I said, I've given a lot and we've gone over because this is not a quick subject, but I want you to know that you can take what is really sticks out to you and that there is hope. There, it, just because, you know, everybody has cancer cells and as long as you're focusing on a positive mindset, so I don't get freaked out that I still could have, because the cancer I have is a very rare and a very aggressive and fast growing cancer. They wanted me to do um, the most toxic and harsh chemo and I, I, I declined and I'm doing healthy diet and then keeping up doing thermographies to make sure that I don't have any growth. But I at first was like freaking out like, oh my gosh. And, and then I decided, you know, what? I'm not going to freak out. I am going to be healthier because of this than I've ever been before. And so keeping that mindset and knowing it and trusting it. So Janelle says the raw nuts. Yeah. Awesome. I love to hear the little tips that stuck out to you. So just trust that you know what to do for your body. Oh, last but not least tip, get two kitty cats. <laughs> That's a great after cancer care like recovery. Make you laugh and they love on you. Oh my gosh, get two kitty cats. I highly recommend it because when they play together, it's hilarious. <laughs> so that would be my last tip. Or you know, you get two puppies. I don't know, anything that can just give you love and, and then also make you laugh. Very good for the mindset because that is, bottom line, that is the key. All right, everybody, um, thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> Susan said, I agree with the cat though, yeah. <laughs> They're so fun. Um, have a great rest of your Tuesday, and I'll see you next Tuesday for our Brain Talk Tuesday. Have a good day. Bye.